uh, audience, uh, let me start uh, the progress report with my uh, uh, six month progress. My topic is the surgery of the female pelvic organ prolapse and the female stress urinary incontinence. Um, yes. Uh, my name is Julia Ach. I am a PhD student and a resident doctor at the urology clinic. My mission is to reduce the complications of the surgical treatments and my vision is to formulate recommendations uh, in terms of uh, the indication, contraindication and the patient selection. Um, here you can see my three ongoing projects. The first two, one is about the pelvic organ prolapse, and the third one is about the female stress urinary incontinence surgeries, and uh, the two other projects uh, will start in the near future. The first one is investigating the safety and efficacy of the female pelvic organ prolapse surgeries with versus without vaginal implants. One in two women over the age of uh, 50 have a certain experience of pelvic organ prolapse, and on average, 11% of the women have a surgery for pop by the age of 80. And in many cases, an implant surgery is required to treat the disease, and with implants, an excellent anatomical correction can be achieved, but there are some complications. And the increasing number of the complications was the reason why FDA has issued several warnings regarding uh, the complication of the vaginal implant surgeries. And several countries, including the USA, completely banned the use of vaginal implants. However, a detailed general exploratory analysis was not performed. And now there are no updated guidelines and clear recommendations when to use or when to avoid the use of vaginal implants. Now we would like to compare the safety and efficacy of uh, the female pelvic organ prolapse surgeries with versus without implants. The question is whether there are any differences regarding the complications and the efficacy between the patients who undergo pelvic organ prolapse surgeries with and without implants. The population is females who undergo these uh, vaginal surgeries. The intervention was the surgeries with implants compared to without implants. The first outcomes are the complications and the second is the efficacy, which means anatomical success. We used the population and the intervention and the control group at the search key. Uh, first, we uh, found uh, more than 20,000 articles, and finally, after the full text selection, 77 were eligible. Now we finished the analysis, and uh, first of all, we uh, did a univariate analysis to each complications, but after, we had to perform a multivariate statistical model to analyze the group of complications together. And we analyze complications, efficacy, functional complications, and non-functional complications also with a multivariate model, which is closer to the reality because the studies uh, uh, use uh, the same population to each complications simultaneously. Uh, first, I would like to show the multivariate uh, model results for, for the functional complications, and I would like to highlight the erosion, which is uh, pretty high in the implant group, of course, because it is an implant-related complication. We use the odds ratio uh, with a 95% confidence interval to analyze the probability of the complications, and it is uh, 14 times higher in the implant group. I can mention that the bleeding and the groin pain was also statistically significant, but groin, pa groin pain was a very rare event, so we need to be critical with this, and the bleeding is not uh, clinically relevantly higher in the implant group. We analyze uh, the functional complications also, and the de novo stress urinary incontinence was statistically higher in the implant group with uh, 1.4400 uh, 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 times. We analyze also the anatomical out outcomes, which are very important outcomes, especially the anatomical success, which was three times, more than three times higher in uh, the implant group, uh, the end of the follow-up period. And I can tell that uh, the follow-up period is very important in case of this complication because the, because the efficacy, of course, is very time-dependent. 
Uh, we use the univariate analysis results in case of uh, the reoperation due to complication. The reoperation due to complication was uh, two times higher in the implant group in case of the RCTs, and it is closer to the reality. And the reoperation due to recurrence uh, was higher in the native tissue group, so the control group without implants. Uh, it was 45% uh, uh, higher. Uh, uh, in the uh, without implant. It was an extensive analysis of the complication with the high quality studies on a large population, but we have some limitation, of course. Uh, one uh, big limitation is the rare events and the other is the heterogeneity. Um, pelvic organ prolapse surgeries with vaginal implants are more effective procedures. And the reoperation due to complication is acceptable, and uh, the difference between the two groups is clinically not relevant. The leading complication, of course, is erosion because it is clearly an implant related complication. The clinical implication for practice is uh, that we need to revise the use of vaginal implants, we need to uh, design the guideline based off uh, the experiences and the findings, and we need to select the best target population and the right indication for the surgeries. The implication for research uh, is that uh, we need to design uh, uh, new RCTs and uh, we need to analyze the prognostic factors which impact the complication. Actually, we are uh, the manuscript write writing phase. We finished the introduction and the discussion part and we would like to finish it, uh, the whole article, to, until May. And uh, our first target journal is the European Urology. My second project is investigating the risk factors uh, associated with complications of the female pelvic organ prolapse surgeries with and without implants. The background is uh, very similar to the first project, but now we would like to identify the suspected risk factors um, and um, the prognostic factors which predisposing to complications in case of the pelvic organ prolapse surgeries. The question is what are the risk factors? Uh, now we would like to use uh, two populations, females who undergo a vaginal surgeries with implants and without implants. We would like to identify the risk factors and we would like to also use the complications as an outcome. The clinical implication is decrease the complications and increase the safety of uh, the pelvic organ prolapse surgeries. Uh, we have two hypotheses, risk factors uh, which can predict complications. Um, are very important uh, to know and there are risk factors which uh, uh, increase the complication rates. We use also the population and uh, the, uh, in, the intervention uh, group and the search key and now we plan to f uh, submit the PROSPERO registration until uh, 4th of April. The third project and the last is investigating risk factors associated with complications of female stress urinary incontinence surgeries. Uh, the prevalence of the female urinary incontinence varies 11 to 60 percent and um, the majority of the cases is stress urinary incontinence and FDA uh, has also uh, um, is issued several warnings regarding the complications of the stress urinary implant surgeries, um, not only the pelvic organ prolapse surgeries and some countries also partially limited these implants. However, the guideline recommend to use the mediurethral slings uh, to treat the stress urinary incontinence. So we would like to identify the causes and the prognostic factors predisposing to complications of the female sling surgeries. The question is what are the risk factors and uh, the population is female who undergo sling surgeries and we would like to identify the risk factors and the outcome is also the complication rates. The clinical implication is the same to uh, uh, the first, uh, the second project and the hypothesis is midurethral slings are still safe and effective to treat the female stress urinary incontinence. We use also the population at the search key and uh, the we start the PROSPERO registration. Here you can see the summary of my project and please let me close uh, my presentation with a quote from Michael Jordan, never say never because limits like fears are often just illusions. Thank you.
I may. Yes, you will see, um, concerning your first project, uh, yeah. as we saw, the, uh, the situation was uh, much worse in the United States uh, as far as the complications are concerned. So they had more and more severe complications than other parts of the world, like, like Europe. So what do you think the background may be there? Yes, um, uh, so uh, uh, in the second project we would like to identify actually this background uh, to analyze the risk factors because I uh, think that uh, in some cases the indication was uh, not pretty good because, for example, if the uh, woman uh, has a sexual uh, active uh, life, uh, you cannot put a vaginal implant. Uh, because of pop, because uh, um, she uh, has a higher chance to get erosion and this paranuria also. And um, the other thing is the surgical practice. Maybe we should uh, centra centralize uh, these uh, surgeries because uh, to um, to do this surgery right, you need to have a, a high surgical volume. I completely agree. My second question is also uh, concerning your first project. So as yes. we saw, uh, the uh, severity of the prolapse. Um, so we, we, you have found some very interesting differences. So the more <coughs> severe uh, the prolapse was, uh, the better was to use the traditional methods. So the, the implants uh, could help us uh, in the less severe um, phases of pelvic organ prolapse. Am I right? Yes, I think. And what do you think the, the explanation may be behind this? So in more severe cases, the, the implants could not work so well. But why? Um, actually, uh, we don't make subgroup uh, analysis uh, based on uh, the pop stage level, for example. But we did. Uh, we did uh, uh, analysis, but uh, we don't uh, use uh, as uh, the population, for example. Uh. So we use uh, as an outcome the pop stage, not the population. And uh, maybe we should analyze the population and after uh, analyze this as an outcome, because it's not independent. Thank you. Uh, so congratulations Thank for you. your presentation. Um, I am not a uro urologist. So I was just wondering that you have mentioned that um, there was a heterogeneity between the dif different types of implants. And what is the difference uh, between these implants? And uh, are there um, any that is superior to the other, maybe? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, actually, uh, there are two, ge two or three generations of implants. And the first generation implants use uh, um, another materials. But after the limitations in the USA, they stopped the, uh, the um, uh, produce and uh, improved the implants. So it, it is a limitation. Um, some companies totally uh, uh, stop uh, producing these implants. So there are no research uh, which implant is better because they stopped it. Thank you. you. You actually you mentioned rare events. Yes. These rare events could be actually very important because you yes. didn't this, you, you didn't plan it because you don't know. But since you have so many data together, so therefore I mean so many patients actually. So maybe some important things are coming out of those. Yes, maybe. So maybe that's just qualitative. But yeah. but if you start to count on those. Yes, then, and uh, yeah. it is hard to treat uh, these rare events statistically. You know, uh, during a multivariate model. Yeah, I, I would still suggest to collect those data yes. too. And then you will see if you can handle that mm -hmm. okay. statistically. Thank you.